Hello, I'm Dr. Paul O'Malley, and today I wanted to go over a topic with you that a lot of our clients and customers ask us. I'm the founder of Great Oral Health, Inc., and one of the big questions that I get asked is when we talk to patients about taking an oral probiotic, they will say, oh, I already take a probiotic for my body. And I said, well, that's for your body. This is for the mouth and the ears and the nose and the throat, the whole oral cavity. And they'll say, well, but I already take one. What, what's the difference? Well, there's quite a big difference. So, for example, in the human body, of course, from the mouth all the way down to the netherlands and the final exit is loaded with bacteria. And most of them are beneficial bacteria. Some of them are harmful or pathogenic bacteria, but we even need some of those because apparently some of the harmful ones help in detoxifying our body. So if we just try to kill everything, that's a no-win situation. Only in emergency do we do those, and that's what antibiotic treatment does sometimes if there's a massive infection. But then we do wipe out a lot of the healthy bacteria, and they have to be repopulated again. And we have the assistance with probiotics to do that. Well, what about up here in the mouth? This is our uh, wild uh, caricature of a guy. He's actually not too unhappy. Maybe he looks a little happy, but you know, because his mouth is so wide open. But in any event, this kind of shows the oral cavity here going down the esophagus into the stomach. So if we take some uh, probiotics, chew them up, swallow them, if they're meant for the lower gut, they have certain formulations in them, hopefully, to make it through the harshness of the stomach acidity and then populate, not in the small intestine, we don't want too many bacteria there, that can cause a lot of discomfort. So they make it all the way through the small intestine, they get into the large intestine where they can populate and then actually help crowd out the more harmful pathogenic bacteria. In the mouth, we have a certain type of bacteria in the mouth that are found in health and then if that goes out of balance then we start seeing gum disease, we start seeing bleeding gums, uh, bad breath, um, teeth getting loose, all sorts of problems, cavities, all those things are from an imbalance of bacteria. But the great divider of it all is the stomach. So if I take a probiotic that goes all the way down, goes through the stomach, goes to the large intestine, it's not necessarily going to be able to come back through and offer a benefit up for the ear, nose, throat, and oral cavity. So we need something that a person can chew or maintain within their mouth that stays within the mouth. And that's the target and that's the goal with oral probiotics. Something will stay here, it'll actually uh, stay around the entire oral cavity and it will actually work all the way up into the throat down through the tonsils if there are tonsils or not and into the ear canal and up into the sinuses all those areas will be seeded by a good strong healthy oral probiotic so that's the difference now a little bit more on these types of bacteria that can form when you have, uh, this is a representation of a uh, group of bacteria that are, that are tightly packed together and, and quote unquote kind of organized. Uh, when they float around freely in solution, they're called planktonic. So they can be just floating around loosely. When they attach to something, living or dead, they're known as a biofilm. And that biofilm has an attachment apparatus that allows it to stick to something. So uh, it could be the teeth, it could be the, the mucosa in the mouth, any of the lining of the uh, throat, etc. So the challenge in bringing in a healthy oral probiotic, or even a probiotic if it's for the lower gut, but the challenge is how do we then break through this wall here and affect these good or bad bacteria. Because this wall is rather impenetrable from uh, detergents, antibiotics, and uh, various other uh, tools that can be used to try to 
harm these bacteria. So we have to sort of sneak something inside that can influence and maybe uh, take down these other bacteria. Let's say we sneak something inside and it can shoot out little lasers and maybe it takes out some of these and then these red ones start populating and bring about a more healthy environment. That's the goal with this. In the human mouth, the bacteria associated with cavities is called strep mutans. Strep is short for a word called streptococcus. Streptococcus just means they're, they're sort of round-shaped um, uh, bacteria. That's the coccus form of streptococcus. Mutants is just the uh, name for it so that we can identify one from another. Strep mutants and another one called strep sobrinus are the ones associated with decay. And they love sugar. You feed them sugar, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. So, and same way down in the lower gut, they love sugar down there too. So, uh, if you decrease the sugar, you're actually decreasing the uh, fuel for these bacteria, which is a good thing. So, does the sugar cause the decay, or does the bacteria cause the decay? You, you know, it's sort of like the chicken and the egg, but the truth is, the sugar feeds the bacteria, they expand, they grow, they're very acidic, and the acidity in their byproduct is what causes destruction to the teeth and we start seeing cavities. Okay, that's the strep mutans. Now, there's an enzyme called dextrinase, which basically means that it can break down dextrin, which is sort of a sugar form, and some of these biofilms are uh, surrounded by this, um, uh, biofilm is loaded with some of these uh, dextrin chains, sugar chains, and they're also involved in attaching it to teeth. So if we get layers and layers and layers of the strep mutans laying on our teeth, that's what's known as plaque. It actually sticks to the teeth. There's little microscopic fingers like you see on a frog that has little suction cups that just sticks right there. That's why someone can clean their teeth and within a half an hour their teeth feel dirty or not so clean again. That's that plaque reattaching there. But if we can make something called uh, dextrinase, the dextrinase can break that attachment apparatus down so that you end up with, once that falls free of the tooth, and then you have a good oral probiotic that goes in to replenish the healthy bacteria, then the attachment apparatus is actually neutralized. And it kind of looks like this. So if you have a biofilm forming around the tooth, that's the plaque. That's this red right here forming all around. It could also continue all the way down here. Someone brushes their teeth. They may mechanically loosen some of this here. That's fine, but the adhesion apparatus still stays behind, and that's why it's like, boom, it just sucks down on that bacteria. It just grabs it. So if we can actually super coat that area with this dextrinase, then we can actually prevent those biofilms from reforming on the teeth, and that's in fact what can be done with the proper type of oral probiotics. So I hope that you've learned something because the, the bottom line is there's a major difference between the probiotics of the gut and the probiotics of the mouth, and some of the big differences, the, the strains that are in the mouth, are there's unique differences between what's here and what's down here, and the stomach divides that. Once you swallow and it goes down through here, that's done. So a really good oral probiotic is also going to have a certain uh, material in it that will help, like a chalky or, or um, a tooth enriching material, like a calcium that will ha actually help it stick and adhere and stay in the oral cavity for as long as possible so that it seeds that area. Okay, thank you very much.